Hello adventurers! Today we're going to learn the basics of DDB Importer. We're going to import a character, spells, items and monsters and look at some of the basic settings to get you up to speed. We're starting here with a blank world. I've already installed the modules we're going to be using today so let's get them enabled. Go to the cogs, manage modules and let's tick the ones we need. At a very minimum you'll probably want to have the D&D Beyond Importer and magic item setup. I strongly recommend using dynamic effects, using active effects, and if you want to use the effects of things like spells, MIDI QOL and MIDI SRD are also important. We're going to be showing off automated applications, companion manager integration later, so I'm going to enable this as well. Right, let's save those module settings and it will restart the game. Part 1. Importing a character. Head over to the Actors tab, click Create Actor and give your actor a name. This doesn't really matter, it will be replaced during the import. Head over to your character on D&D Beyond, copy the URL, then click the D&D Beyond button next to the naming boundary. You can use Control V to paste the URL into this field. You'll see a green tick. It's all worked. Let's leave the default settings as they are for the minute and click Start Import. It'll take a few seconds. Now we can see we have Calvin in Foundry. All of his attributes are here, his skills are selected, all of his items have been imported, all of his features and all of his spells. Part 2. Cobalt Cookie. Now you may be wanting to import Calvin's known spells as well as the ones he has prepared. To do this we need to let D&D Beyond know what user we are so it can fetch our list of known spells from the database. Click on the settings, configure settings, module settings and go to the D&D Beyond Importer section. Click Core Setup. There's some locations here that can be changed for where images are stored, but we're after this Cobalt Cookie section. You can use my Chrome extension to find the Cobalt Cookie. Download the zip file from the Releases page linked in the README file. Once you have this, you're going to want to extract it into a directory and then open up your extensions page. Enable developer mode in the top right, then click load unpacked in the top left. Navigate to the folder where you extracted your DDB importer Chrome extension and click open. It should load. Once you've loaded the extension, you're going to need to reload your D&D Beyond page. Now, click the little jigsaw piece and find the little blue dice. When you click on it, a button will open saying get cookie. Click the button. It will appear nothing will happen. Back in Foundry, click in the field and use Control V to paste the cookie. You can check it by clicking the button. Success! If this doesn't work for you, there are some manual steps you can follow to grab the cookie. Click on the link in the box to find out more. Now scroll to the bottom and click save. Now we can re-import Calvin. This time all the spells he knows as well as the ones he has prepared have appeared. Part 3 Spells, Items and Monsters. In order to import monsters you need to be running your own DDB proxy or be one of my Patreon supporters. You can click on the Detect Patron status and it will open up a window and attempt to connect to Patreon. Alternatively, if you have a key, you can paste it into this field instead. 
you may want to take this opportunity to set up your campaign. This is useful if content is shared with you via a campaign on D&D Beyond. To import items, spells and monsters, click on the Compendium tab, the DDB Muncher field, and it will open up a screen to start. Let's accept the defaults, click across to Spells, and Spell Munch. Items and Item Munch. Once this is complete, we can import monsters. It is important that you import spells before you import monsters. This is going to take a few seconds. Go make yourself a cup of tea. Right, the import has finished and we have an endless stream of messages. There's not much we can do about this, but you can safely reload your session to dismiss them. Let's open up our compendiums to check. The importer will have done its best to import art, attacks and spells. Part 4. Adventures. So I'm running Lost Minds of Vandelva and I'd like to import the adventure and all of its content from D&D Beyond. I've written a little utility called Adventure Muncher, which allows this to take place. Before we can use that, we need to download a config file. Click on the DDB Muncher icon, click across the Adventures tab, and generate a config file. Once we've downloaded this Adventure Muncher file, we can head over to the documentation. This will walk us through the process and it gives a link to Adventure Muncher. We can download the latest release here. The releases are for Linux, Mac OS and Windows. Download the version you're interested in and launch it. When you launch Adventure Muncher the first time, it's going to look like this. Click the load config file. Navigate to the file you just downloaded Now select an output location. These are the files you will upload to Foundry. Finally, select a book you wish to munch. I'm going to select Lost Minds of Fandelva. There are two settings here. You're going to want to untick the Generate Actors and Tokens if you don't have your own proxy set up, or you're not a Patreon supporter, or you're running an earlier version of Foundry. Journals and tables observable by players is useful if you want to generate, say, a player's handbook and have all of the content available to the players. Now, it's going to take a few minutes to go away, download the adventure and pass it. Go and make yourself a cup of tea. Success. Our adventure has been successfully generated. We can close the adventure muncher. Back into Foundry and click Import Generated Adventure. Let's choose the file that was generated. This is going to take a little bit of time as it imports the scenes and journals and tables and links them all together. If you have any missing items, spells or monsters, to also try to download these from D&D Beyond Success. Let's explore what was imported.
Let's have a look at this scene. We can see that pins are placed. Monsters have been imported. There are walls and there are lights. It's worth noting that not every adventure has this level of detail. These are community contributed as people work their way through them. There is good coverage right now for popular adventures. If you wish to contribute, please reach out. Let's have a look at some journals. Journals are broken into the chapters as displayed on D&D Beyond. There is a combined journal, There are pop-ups to any handouts, links to characters and items. The individual sections have also been broken out. Handouts have been created, as have pins for the apps. If you wish to show an image to a player's Hover over the image and click Show Players. If you wish to jump to the section in D&D Beyond, click the little D&D Beyond icon. There aren't a lot of tables in Lost Mines of Found Elba, and the importer will do its best to import the ones it's fi it finds. This isn't perfect. Not all the tables are translated into foundry tables. If it finds monsters, it will attempt to do its best to link those up. These will appear in the Actors tab. Part 5. Encounter Muncher. I find that Wizards of the Coast don't provide scenes for every encounter, or if like me your players will decide to kick off somewhere completely unexpected. D&D Beyond does have a lovely encounter builder. It's a tool that allows you very quickly to put together encounters. The first encounter in Lost Mines of Vandalva is a goblin ambush. I've selected my party, which is just two first level characters. I currently have a single goblin. That's going to be too easy. Let's try with two goblins. Under the scenes directory, you can click DDB Encounter Muncher. You can select the encounter you wish to import. It will highlight in red any missing characters and missing monsters. There are a number of options to choose from. The encounter muncher is going to create a scene for us. We can select a simple background. We can see the encounter muncher has imported Sergeant Hobbs, our second character. It's also created this scene with two goblins and placed our characters onto it. It's filled out the encounter tracker. Part 6 Update DD Beyond. As an example, let's say this encounter goes well but Calvin is reduced to a single hit point and uses both of his spells. At the end of the session, we may, we may wish to sync this information back to D&D Beyond. Click on the D&D Beyond button. Click Update D&D Beyond. Select the items you wish to sync. And then click the button.
D&D Beyond has been updated. Let's have a look. You reload the page. You can see the hit points have changed and the spell slots have been used. A new feature is coming, which will allow these changes to be synced as they happen back to D&D Beyond. Keep your eyes peeled. Part seven, companions. Let's say Calvin has got some friends in that encounter. Maybe they befriended one of the goblins. You can add these into your character sheet under extras. Let's name this goblin small. This will also work for things like druid wild shapes or a battlesmith defender and so on. Back in Foundry, open up your character and click the D&D Beyond button. Click Import Companions. It'll import the companions into a folder called Extras. If you're using Wild Shape, it'll apply the appropriate modifiers. If you're using the companions module, it'll link these automatically. 